Hello, good morning. Um, it's Craig Lord for Swimming World TV. We're in Dallas, we're at the Asker World Clinic, and we're talking about the ISL today. I've got um, Caitlin Sandino with me, and I've got Jason Lezak, two of the heroes of USA Swimming, <laughs> and, um, and we're going to talk about why this is a great idea for swimming. Um, okay, I'm just going to start by saying, why, do, why does the world of swimming need an ISL? Huh, our athletes deserve more attention and more recognition and an opportunity for financial improvements and growth. And, you know, we're the most popular sport every four years for two weeks during the Olympics, and then it fades away. So our athletes, I mean, they deserve this opportunity. And you said some things yesterday about the fact that in your day and so on, there were kids some of the best women in the world, taking nine to five jobs and so on. It's pretty and still hard. still today, yeah? it's not just back in my day. I mean, our athletes have to hustle really hard for these other opportunities uh, for financial growth. Um, I don't think a lot of people realize that a lot of people have to have another job while training for the Olympics. So you have the athletes that are the best in the world yeah. having to pick up shifts so they're able to provide while they're training. Right, exactly. Jason. Well, with, with that said, I mean, you got like uh, a lot of people that are doing swim clinics and doing yeah. appearances and doing things for their sponsors. That's and exhausting. They're spending a lot of time doing that versus training and preparing. So, with this, um, we're trying to give them an opportunity to do less of that, more of the training, and more of the competing. And uh, it's going to be great for the fans because fans love swimming, as we know, and it's great every four years. But now you're going to get people that don't necessarily swim or no swimming maybe following it like they're following the NBA or the right. NFL and they're going to become swim fans and really help this sport grow and give those athletes that opportunity not only to make money from ISL but now they can make money outside of ISL because they're more commercially recognized. Building their brand. Yeah and I, I mean one of the things that came up yesterday was this idea that you know kids are going to have to be careful because they've got an Olympic focus and um, so maybe they'll be exhausted if they take on the ISL but actually it doesn't it just doesn't quite work like well, that does it? Yeah, yeah I'll take that I mean yeah. this year I think the ISL was very protective of that. Yes. Um, you know, and supportive. In, in the future, th this is going to be a league where it's more like that's compared to the NFL, where maybe there's a competition every weekend. Uh, every team might not gonna be competing every weekend, but there's something on there for the, for the viewers to see, and it's going to extend for a long period of time. With the Olympics this year, the ISL was very respectful of mm -hmm. let's finish this in December, mm -hmm. let those athletes get rid of the, the focus on those competitions and now focus on the Olympic competition. And as GMs, I mean, I, I can speak for Jason and all of us. I mean, we have been, our athletes is our number one focus. So if they don't feel comfortable coming to one of our competitions, we 100% support that. We have to change our lineup a little bit or our recruiting was different or what have you but this is for the athletes by the athletes and as GMs we are 100% respecting what their coaches and the swimmers plan is going into 2020. So that actually comes down to good management. 100%. Yeah, it, it's sort yeah, of about knowing what you're doing. <laughs> well yeah? as former athletes yeah. we get it you yeah. know and, and we're truly in this for the athletes and then you know a bigger picture for the sport so it, it's a trickle effect we do this for the athletes it grows the sport and we're going to be 100% supportive because as Olympians, we want them going yeah. to 2020 and dominating and bringing home the gold. Like, this is nothing to take away from the Olympics. Yeah, right, right. Um, good point. Now, shall we get into the nitty gritty of what it's going to look like? Nitty what gritty, the, the yes. Nitty gritty yes, yes, the yeah. arm so. wrestle <laughs> between Cali Condors I'm and DC yeah, Trident. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, you've got logos on, you're wearing logos. We Can do. you tell me a bit about how you chose your logo and what is it? Because so, there'll be folks watching from all over the world and they have no idea. So, basically, I'm a, I'm a Cali Condor. Um, they got big wings, they fly, <laughs> they're fast. And, uh, you know, I, I chose this. I was lucky enough to come into the game early, and I decided on my team, and I thought having the, the Condors was cool in California. And, um, you know, designing the logo, I take all credit for it. I'm a very creative person. Um, we just did a logo he challenge into somewhere. A and, you know, I, I so probably should have won. But anyways, uh, I, I think I got cool colors, cool logo, and I think I'm going to get a lot of fans that are going to love it. They're going to be wearing my stuff, and that's what's important. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it was a very interesting process. Um, I myself am very much into design and fashion, so it was it was fun for me. But it was also it was it was hard. I mean, we wanted it was a lot of back and forth. Um, obviously, there has to be um, the the synergy working with ISL global you know yeah. this is very much a brand identity and yeah. um, also there's a, 
ISO Global is Eastern European, so there's a little bit yeah. of a different culture there too. So right. there was definitely some give and take, and you know I'm really proud of the DC Trident logo. Um, you know everybody's like, well, why not the obvious like the Trident? Because that's too obvious. We wanted movement yeah. and character and um, the strong beast of the sea, the shark, and um, I, I, I like it. I'm excited <laughs> on it. I love our colors. I think they're very dominant. Um, I'm pumped up, but I, I think in general I, I, the brands uh, across for all the logos. They're exciting, yeah. they're fun. It's just something to kind of talk trash on. And you've all got, <laughs> you're color coded, whatever. aren't you? Do you want to say something to that? No, I just, my one word for that is whatever. Um, <laughs> you know, she just spoke a lot about nothing, really. Okay. Uh, no, I'm tired, but I'm good. excited no. about DC Trident. <laughs> so, so look, um, it, it's color coded as well. You're all color coded, and you'll be swimming in your own lanes. For, so you'll have lane two. Are you at a swim meet where people swim in the same lane? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, I mean, for example, <laughs> that you won't be, you'll, you'll be yeah, in okay. lane two. <laughs> and you'll... So this is going to be easy to recognize yeah. which team you're on. So, for example, I'll be in lane one and two. Caitlin will be in lane three and four, the other teams, etc. And you'll be able to see the different colors, different lanes. You'll say, hey, those are the Cali Condors. That's who I'm cheering for. And you'll be able to see them and know where they're at, which is going to be great. Yeah. Um, we all, it's a uniform. We all have different colors. And, and if you look at all the other sports, um, yeah, there might be similar logos, similar colors, but they do send, stand apart in certain ways. So we will stand apart. That's kind of like going back to, I, I remember as a kid watching 72 Olympics. It was the first color Olympics on TV, color TV and so on. And you could identify immediately where Australia was, where America was, because yeah. it was very distinct. The colors, right. the suits and so on. Um, and we lost that kind of slightly with the, all the black suits and yeah. all the rest of it. Um, so that brings us back to instant identification. Yeah, this, this year we're all going to have different caps. So you'll be able to right. see our recognition. We're going all black on dark on the suits. So that's going to be, everyone's going to be the same there. Um, but for recognition, what before, you see before the they're pool. swimming, you know where they're at. And uh, um, as far as graphics go, now if you watch TV, before the races, they have those, you know, a lot of times they'll show what countries or what swimmers, and it's very recognizable when they put those up. So um, the, the fans at the venue and the fans on TV are definitely going to know who's swimming where. Yeah. What's going to be really important as well is, is the cheering, the chanting. There's, there's going to be a lot of action yeah, from the stands. Yeah. Are you actually practicing that as part of the show? Are you, are you, yeah? I, I can't divulge all of our team secrets, right. but no, I mean, obviously there's a huge emphasis on team. Uh, yeah. This league is yeah. about being a team. Uh, you know, I do find something to be very much an individual sport, but it's yeah. so exciting when you're representing a team. I think what a lot of our professional athletes miss is that college environment, something right. to represent, something to have pride on, something to be yeah. on relays for, because um, not everybody gets to be on an international yeah. relay or represent U.S. on a relay. Uh, so really um, embracing that culture of being on a team, and um, we'll be electing team captains and vice captains, mm. so we'll probably throw that responsibility of team chance to the captains. <laughs> Have you had any te like little teasers, like little previews of what the light show is going to be like, the presentation and so on? Can you tell us about it? They're, they're hiding that from the general managers. But, but uh, what we've been we, told We've been told some epic. good stuff. And, yeah, we you got know, This isn't going to be yesterday. your typical swim meet. Yes. Um, it's going to be two two-hour sessions, so Saturday and a Sunday. And during those two-hour sessions, something really unique about it is we're going to have two breaks. And during those breaks, the coaches are actually able to change the lineups. So you have a swimmer doing really well. You have another swimmer not doing so well. You can pull them out, put somebody in. And this is different than anything you've ever seen uh, with, with the different lights and technology, different things. Yeah. Technology, they're going to have a really good show, not only for the people watching on TV, but for the people there to be yes. entertained. Maybe a DJ out here, you know, so Rumor has it's it. going to be a lot of fun. I've <laughs> seen some other sports and professional sports. You see, you know, footballers and so on have, uh, when I say footballers, I mean soccer, soccer. players. You know, <laughs> I mean, but uh, they have their own dances if they, uh, you know, score a goal or yeah. something. Are you going to do stuff like that? You know, we're building a culture. You know, you bring yeah. us some really good points. And the, the number one thing is the athletes. And then, in my opinion, fans have to be closely right after that. So the more that we can get the, van the fans engaged and get the sponsors engaged, get the community involved and we, it, it, that's on us right yeah, so we're right. in a very infant stage this is the first season a condensed season wouldn't you say being that it's only three competitions fourth if you make it um, onto the finals so um, that's the exciting part we're, we are yeah. starting from the the grassroots up of the first year and the fun part is the logos the the um, the identity yeah. of the team and what yeah. culture surrounds it with you know what the fans bring so there's going to be some interesting aspects to it, like um, I think in the two hours there's going to be a couple of breaks where you can change your teams, stuff like that, and there's also going to be, that's tactical, so... Uh, yeah, so 
Uh, the general managers were, they, we drafted the team. So we picked them all and we had to know what events these people swim and what they're good at. But now it's coming down to the coaches who are actually going to make those decisions of entering those swimmers and making those game time changes. So we're going to be up in the stands yeah, we're hoping on, we're our coaches, yeah. um, you know, I got a radio already. I'll be talking to my head coach. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, GMs be, are not uh, on the deck. Okay. Hey, uh, Coach Troy, I think you need to pull Caleb out of that race, save his energy for the skins race. That's triple, triple points. points. Make it happen. <laughs> Good stuff. Okay, and there's also going to be a penalty for sl going too slow. Yeah? <laughs> so if you go below a level, you don't get any points. Um, uh, is that something you're going to kind of reinforce with some warnings? Well, we have to, to, yeah, definitely. I mean, our swimmers need to be aware of it. Um, I mean, you guys kind of have the most breaking up to date technical rules um so a lot of it was solidified y yesterday really right. so you know I've, okay. I've known this but i've held off on sharing too much with the athletes because obviously they're there to swim fast right yeah. they're excited for the opportunity um yeah. we're four weeks out so we're getting to the nitty-gritty where we're, you know we'll be locking in with our athletes and yeah. for me i'm still wrapping up my roster i have two more spots on the female side i need to secure um so it's kind of waiting to get everything locked in and then we'll elect captains and really you know go step by step what this league has as far as the technical side with yeah. going certain times and and whatnot. Well, I mean, I think with that said, you look at other events and fans pay to be there. People are watching on TV. You don't want to see someone not give it that effort. And, right. and with this format, that could easily happen. Say, hey, I have another event in 20 minutes. I'll save my energy, go really slow. Well, that just gave a terrible show for the fans. And also for TV, when you have a 25-meter pool, the camera's focused here, somebody's on the other side, you can't even see them. So that doesn't make it fun for anybody. So I think it's great that they have to have a standard of you make this or you deduct points. It's, it's, a, it's a neat thing that they're doing. It's different, right? Yeah, and exactly. different's exciting yeah. and good. And yeah. like we said, we talked about earlier, bringing on this excitement for the, the swimming um, fans out there and swimmers. Many pro teams, they travel together, they go to venues. You've got kids coming from all over the world. So are they traveling together or are they just going to arrive at the venue? Yeah. We are in the middle of logistics and flights right now. But, yeah, you, you said it. They're coming from all over the world. So we're getting them there for the first meet, and then we'll travel as teams. You know, like when we go from Indy to Naples, we will all be traveling together. And then from Naples, you got to send everybody to their different continents, countries, cities. And then we'll come back again for the meet in November as well. So as you can imagine, a lot of logistics going on right now. Okay, so just one last question before we wrap up. Um, ten years from now, if you had to see where this league is going and what it's done for the sport, where do you think we'll be? Well, I think uh, the vision is something like in the United States we have NFL or NBA. Um, in, uh, what would you call it, like some kind of liga something yeah. over there? <laughs> the premiership. Whatever. Oh, there you go, the premiership. Uh, so that, that's the goal, and I think... Swimming has the potential for that because of what we get at the Olympics and how much people love it. And if you compare what's being watched at the Olympics and swimming compared to some of these other sports, there's no question that this can work and this can happen. And in 10 years from now, it could be as big as one of those. 100%. Thank you very much. Okay, it's Craig Lord saying goodbye, and we're going to say go through the same kind of thing with Tina Andrew in a minute and with Lenny Kraselberg. Thank you very much. Go try it.